Okay, I begin by thanking the organizers for restarting the meeting and I'm very happy to be back here. Uh, I think this is the eighth TATFIS Kolkata meeting and uh, the fifth one that I'm attending. So I've been pretty regular. So the title of my talk is Short Time Extremal Response to State Stimulus for a Single Cell E. coli. Uh, e. coli bacteria, they show the ability to, to perform chemotaxis, which means they show motile response to chemical gradients. So imagine you place few bacterial cells in a buffer solution, and if you dip a capillary full of some attractant chemical in it, then the cells show a tendency to, to swarm around the capillary end. Or if there is an attractant repellent, um, some repellent chemical, then the cells try to avoid the capillary end. So this motion is called chemotaxis. And for a single cell, it happens via run and tumble motions as shown here. When the cell is placed in a homogeneous chemical environment, then after a large number of run and tumbles, the net displacement is very close to zero. But when there is a gradient present, then all the runs in the favorable direction, they are extended and in the opposite direction, they are shortened and the cell develops a net chemotactic drift. Inside the cell, in the signaling pathway, the most important component is the chemoreceptors, which are transmembrane proteins. So half of them are sticking outside the cell, half of them are inside the cell. And these proteins, the part that is sticking out, they, that can bind to the attractant chemicals, which are float, diffusing outside the cell. And um, uh, the, uh, these proteins can be in two different uh, conformations called active and inactive state. And the free energy difference between the two states is a function of the ligand or attractant concentration and the methylation level of the receptors. The switching rate between these two levels, that depends on this free energy. And in the adapted state, when the cell is well adapted to its environment, then the average activity, that is the number of uh, fraction of active receptors in the active, uh, fraction of active receptors, that has this Boltzmann form. And this uh, methylation, it acts as some kind of a negative feedback. Uh, achha, first, let me say this, that uh, when the activity is large, then the tumbling bias is large. Now, if L is large, the ligand concentration is large, then the free energy becomes large, activity becomes small, tumbling bias becomes small, and smooth runs are possible. Uh, and for uh, methylation gives the, uh, it plays the role of a negative feedback. That means active receptors get demethylated, and inactive receptors get methylated. So therefore, if the activity becomes too high or too low, the methylation adjusts the free energy accordingly such that it gets back to its average value. Another important aspect of this signaling pathway is cooperativity among the receptors. So the receptors show a clustering tendency and all the cluster, all the receptors present in a cluster, they switch their activity state in sync. This results in a amplification of the input signal and this is responsible for the very sensitive response shown by the E. coli bacteria. So they can, um, I mean, even if you place a very weak gradient, they can sense the gradient. It is because of this signal amplification that is happening because of receptor clustering. And this is the most common experimental scenario that people consider, that you place the bacteria in a certain attractant environment, let's call it L0, that is the concentration, then at time t is equal to 0, you suddenly change the concentration and bring it to another level L1. One would expect at the pre-stimulus state, at t less than 0, or large time after the stimulus is given, t goes to infinity, the cell will be adapted to its environment. And as a result, the experimentally measurable quantities like receptor activity or tumbling bias, they are time independent in this, for these times. But short, immediately after the stimulus is given, then this, uh, these quantities, receptor activity or tumbling bias, they show rapid variation with time. They change with time rapidly. They reach some extremal value and from which they slowly relapse to the new steady state. Most of the earlier theoretical and experimental work focus on the long time relaxation. But we are asking the question, what happens after, af immediately after the stimulus is given? In particular, we are interested in how long the cell need to reach its extremal response and how to characterize the properties of the signaling network at this time. And we answered these questions using numerical simulations as well as exact calculation. 
So first let me present the numerical data. So here uh, these discrete symbols that shows you the time variation of activity and the continuous lines I have plotted this Boltzmann form of free energy. Now as expected in the um, before the stimulus is given both these quantities were same, they were equal because the cell was adapted. They start differing as soon as you give the pulse but you see at the tip of these curves they are equal again which means at the extremal point T is equal to T when the activity is large, farthest away from any adapted state we satisfy the equality which is expected only in adapted state. So we explain this observation from exact calculation. I don't have time to go through everything. But PN1T is the probability to find N1 active receptor clusters at time T. We can write down the master equation for this quantity. And what actually enables us to calculate the extremal condition is the observation that at time T, A, T is equal to TA when activity is maximum or minimum, the DDT of that should be zero. Time derivative should vanish. This actually allows us to um, perform the calculation exactly and derive this uh, condition at t is equal to ta. <clears throat> Next we uh, look at the variation of ta as a function of the receptor cluster size and we find there is a minimum which means there is a specific size of the receptor cluster or the signaling team at which the extremal response is reached in the shortest possible time. To explain this result, we define this variable zt, which is the difference between the um, Boltzmann form and the current, uh, average activity. By definition, at t is equal to ta, zta is 0. First, I will show that ta increases with n for large n. Consider the case of step removal. When n is very large, then this um, drop in free energy becomes very large such that e to the f becomes very small and this quantity is very close to unity. This means active to inactive state transitions are effectively blocked. Only the reverse transition is possible and therefore activity can only increase during this time. As n becomes larger and larger, this transition remains blocked for a longer period as shown in this plot. For larger value of n, it remains stuck to unity for a longer period of time. So therefore Ta which marks the point where the derivative just reverses sign, Ta increases with n. For small n on the other hand, Ta decreases with n because for small n no such transition remains blocked and all both forward and reverse transitions are possible but the transition rates are now function of n and the difference between these two rates increases with n, yes thank you, the difference between these two rates increases with n. And uh, as a result, activity increases faster and ZT reaches 0 quicker. So TA decreases with N. So TA decreases with N for small N, increases with N for large N. So there must be some minimum at some intermediate value. Whatever I just said, this entire argument can be repeated if I just hold the receptor cluster size fixed and play with the step size of the stimulus. For large size, size of the step stimulus, similarly one kind of transition remains blocked and TA increases with step size. And everything is repeated and therefore one would expect that there should be a specific size of the step stimulus for which this extremal response is reached in the shortest possible time. And indeed our simulation verifies this. When we plot Ta as a function of step size, then we do find a minimum. And this is some prediction that can be very easily tested in experiment. Similar results we find for tumbling bias as well, but I don't have time to go through this. I have just presented the results for activity here. So these are, um, uh, I don't want to repeat what I just said. So uh, this these res results recently came out in this, uh, this paper. And um, with that, this is the funding acknowledgement. And I would leave you with this Tatfis Kolkata uh, 12, which some of my co-organizers have already talked about. It is December this year. These are the topics which we focus uh, for this year's meeting. And these are the institutes which are organizing SN Bose Center, ISR Kolkata, VCC, RKM Velour University, and ISCS. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention.